there's the sun in there under those palm trees. So there's quite a bit of haze. It looked even darker earlier, obviously. <laughs> But it's going to be a, a glorious day. Maybe reaching about in the high 30s Celsius. So that is in the, good in the 90s. 100, approaching 100. Well, not quite, but not far away. So, We're in familiar territory. Mount Arbel back there. So we're just north of Mount Arbel, about a kilometer or so. Not quite a mile. It's a very fresh morning. So don't feel the heat yet. Great to see you all coming in here on this live stream. Now we can see a little bit more of the sun here. Get a spot where there's more opening in the trees. There we are. It's funny, the, I tried to get the camera to focus in on the sun. There you can see a little bit of the sun. I have to move slowly now because it's so zoomed in. If we go down a little bit there you can. There we go. Everything has its own magic, right? And to just one creature in the whole cosmos, it would be an empty place. But all the creatures have their place the birds chirping, the trees, and each of us. And even if you're called the lesser, you have your place. And it could be a very special place. And that's the story today of James the Apostle. He's called James the Lesser, or sometimes the Younger, or sometimes the Little, <laughs> depending on the language, you know. And some people would be offended if they were called the Little or the Less. But imagine to have been called by Jesus. It doesn't matter if you're little or less. <laughs> How could it matter? I'm going to rest here on this fence for a second and rest the camera here so we get a little more stability. There we are. And then you have others called the greater. So are you called the lesser or the little one or the greater one or the big one or the giant? Does it matter? Does it matter? You got to sing your song. You're not singing the song of the other artist that song of love for all eternity that you will sing. Here we have a different perspective. Back there, there were palm trees. Here we have olives. And dates are great. They're so tasty. But olives are wonderful. The olive trees. 
And these seem much better kept than other ones down further. So somebody's working hard here. So maybe we already have a little, a little inspiration for our lives, for our happiness, and to help the happiness of others. That whether you're called the greater, the lesser, whether you're from Migdal or Tiberias or Timbuktu, it doesn't matter. You will sing your song. You will have your harvest. You'll have your crop a crop of holiness, a crop of great fruit. And here we have weeds. <laughs> so we had palm trees and olives and weeds. There are cackling birds back there. Not sure if you heard them. We have this screeching one here. That we're very familiar with at Magdala also. You know that you will till the soil, but it'll bring forth thistles and thorns and briars. Here's a small fig tree. You see the very big leaves the fig trees have. So I presume that's why they cover themselves with fig tree leaves. Those are thistles on the left, okay? And there are the fig trees, and they have a very smooth bark and branch. There's some more of those cackling birds over here to the left. But I don't think you picked them up on the microphone. So today we celebrate uh, Apostle James, Philip and James. Philip has quite a few times in St. John's Gospel. They were both from Bethsaida. So maybe that's one of the reasons why they're celebrated together. James would have been martyred in Jerusalem around the year 62. And Philip in Asia Minor, so south western Turkey today, Phrygia, and he would be around 80 apparently, according to the sources. We have historical sources about his life. Not a cloud in the sky. Oh, you still have the moon. The moon's a perfect half moon right now. So let me help you to find the moon. Where is the moon? 
there, look. On the right, in the center over towards the right there, near the palm leaves, palm branches. So it's actually almost like a perfect half moon. You see the Sea of Galilee there. You want to feel the bark? Give it a little hug. <laughs> a pretty rough dude. You don't want to go cheek to cheek with this one. So these guys are fishermen, you know, at the Sea of Galilee. And look what their life turned out to be. Amazing. Here we still have the harvest. Oh, I'm not sure if I told you, I learned that this will be entirely baled. It will not be thrashed. That means the, the seed will not be separated from the stalks. It will be all baled and will be fed as forage for, uh, for the cattle. So that's the purpose of this. I learned this from a mango farmer here the other day, over here to the left, and after I had done the live stream. And he, um, he explained that to me, and we're trying to get contact with the farmer who grows this wheat here, who has a farm quite far away from here, so. He didn't know him personally, so I hope we can get an interview with him since we spent so much time here. But that might be difficult at this hour of the morning, who knows? We'll see. One of the things that uh, came across my mind a lot, looking at the harvest, you know, they need a road. Who keeps the road going? They need machinery. Who builds the machinery? Who designs it? Who makes improvements? And who maintains it? You need mechanics. And in this case, the food forage goes straight to the animals, so there's not much further processing. But imagine all the other foodstuffs, the amount of processing that goes to make flour and the delivery to our tables. So the, the farmer who gets, does that harvest is part of a bigger process, a more complex process. So we're in lots of relationships, in lots of relationships. Here there's another little strip of the same wheat. And a small boat marina here, relatively small compared to the one beside us. I'm hoping to bring you over to the water here. Not sure if I'll be successful, but we'll try. When I was here a month or so ago, or I don't know, two months ago, I forget. There were some guys working here with these tools. In fact, there's a guy here right now. And the dog, I'm just after waking up a dog, you know, don't wake the dogs. So I just waved to our friend here at the little station. So I think down here there's access to the water. Bokertov! So he's obviously here to bring boats out to the water for those who wish. We're going to keep going here because I want you to get a little bit of sun on the water. I'll say hello to him on the way back. Before we used to be able to walk here from Ginnasar, which is just north of us here, all the way down to Magdala, but it's not possible anymore because the water is so high. So
so we have special readings today and the reading of John's Gospel we actually had it last week and this conversation between Jesus and Philip at the Last Supper and the revelation by Philip's question one of the big legacies we have from that moment is a great insight into the mystery of Christ imagine when we get into conversation with people that we're not just doing trivia we're gaining great understanding of ourselves, of the mystery of God, of life. And it can be small things, things that make such an impression on a child's mind. In a, it can be also the attitude and the gentleness of a conversation. It can also be dealing with a difficult moment. And it's interesting, there are always people out there who have bitter criticism. And there are others who are filled with love and they only read it positively. It's amazing uh, how we are being formed in all the circumstances. And we can choose to do that. And these young fellows were here fishing and Jesus called them. You know, the way we're calling all the time as well, we're calling people to greater fulfillment, to greater depth. And in a way, we're also sending people out, we're encouraging them, we're, in all of our conversations, with all of our interactions. So after an encounter with somebody, we could always wonder, is this person strengthened because of this encounter? Is this person happier? Is this person more at peace? Is this person more encouraged for life? What a great way to live. Oh, we got all these birds here. We probably got some fish here as well. The question is if we can spot them before they disappear. Hear all the birds? Are you afraid of the dark? I just discovered part of the pathway. I remember walking here years ago. With all the cane. You getting afraid? You want to go through here? These are so light, these canes, and they're strong. I always had a couple of them for walking. This is appreciated in the heat as well because it provides nice shade. I wonder how far south we can go here.
question is how far along can we get here? Well, I know where we are. Different spots, such a variety of spots around the Sea of Galilee, isn't it? Amazing. I need to walk on water to bring you through here, people. So I'm not in the mood to do that this morning. My way is cut off here. And Philip asked, show us the father, that'll be enough. And Jesus said, and how long have I been with you, Philip? And you haven't realized that I am in the father and the father is in me. What a legacy. Moments of silence in nature at dawn. Thank you for joining this morning. It's been a delight. God bless you. See you later, alligators.